I could give you all the strategy in the world. If you don't have the confidence to ask for what you want, the strategy is not going to work. So the confidence is the first step in there. Today, um, I am coming on to do this live. Hi, everybody. We are going to be talking about making money today, which is one of my favorite topics, and how to quickly and easily make money. One of the ways that I have been able to do it, and thousands of others have been able to do it, is by pitching. You can pitch a brand, a partner, a sponsor, whatever you want to call them, on your ideas, and they will pay you to post mostly on social media, but of course on your blog and other ways as well, they will pay you to post on social media and to become a brand partner. So we're going to be talking about that today. We're going to be talking about how to get paid for posting on social media, how to get paid for creating content, how to get paid for really just sharing your message and your service in the world, and not only how to get paid, but how to actually make it a sustainable and profitable business for yourself. So we're going to be having an awesome woman named Macy today joining us here on this conversation. And Macy has gone from, I think last year in brand partnerships, she made about $17,000 for the year. And this year already, we haven't even hit October yet, and she's going to be making over six figures. And so she was able to, in just a short amount of time in less than a year, go from $17,000 in a year to over $100,000 in a year, just by learning the right way to put herself out there and to pitch. And so it's going to be a really awesome conversation on how you can do that too. Um, Macy's going to be sharing some strategies that have really worked for her and really also sharing with you guys how she was able to overcome some of those limitations and just some of those things that were kind of getting in the way that she didn't even realize were getting in the way um, until she learned the right way to do it. So Macy, if you want to share a little bit about, obviously you're a content create creator, but a little bit about what you do and then how you've been able to quickly and easily start monetizing and making money off of the content that you create? Yeah, of course. So basically I started September of 2018 and I started everything with a blog. And basically with my blog, I just um, told my story because I have a very interesting, unconventional story of my life about getting pregnant as a teenager and then having someone that I loved pass away and kind of going through a bunch of trials. And from there, it kind of turned, I wasn't looking to become an influencer, but that's kind of what it turned into. And I found a lot of women coming to me for advice and different things like that. And then I was like, okay, I can kind of like to make this a job maybe. But like, I was a little concerned about how I would make money because I had a different niche. I was like, what even is my niche? I was just very confused in the beginning. And then I found you, Julie, and I was listening to your podcast every day, every episode. And I was able to start getting like more of a framework of what I wanted to do and how I could do it. I even think I got my first brand deal before I joined Pitch It Perfect, um, but it was I think when I only had like 4,000 followers, maybe less than that, maybe 3,000, I had a decent engagement rate, but I got my first brand deal and I was like, okay, so we can actually make money doing this. So it wasn't like, it was hard to get the first thing and get my mindset right. And I think that was always one of my biggest obstacles was like, how do I make money from this? Because I'm doing something that I've never seen anyone do. And so that was always my biggest hurdle I had to get over. And then once I got over that, I was like, I can do like whatever I want. I don't have to be super, super specific. And so I was able to kind of start there and grow my following on social media. And eventually now um, I've been doing super well. We're like I, Julie said, we're getting close to six figures. We'll probably go over that this year. And last year it was um, under 20. So yeah, things have been doing really well. Well, I would love to dive into this. And for anyone that's here that you, you have questions, please, there's a little question mark at the bottom. So just add your questions in there because me and Macy would be happy to answer those um, during this conversation. But the first question I have for you, Macy, is that you said that like you first kind of had to figure out like how to make money and get over some mindset stuff. So how did you actually do that? How did you go from not making money to actually getting that first brand deal? I would say a lot of it was a grind. Cause I really, in my mind, I was like, I have to have 10,000 followers to get a brand deal, which I now I realize it wasn't true because a lot of times brands do, they're looking for quality content. Like they want content to use on their channels. So beyond just having amount of followers, like they are looking for content that's good to post on their social medias and like on their websites and different things like that, which I didn't realize back then. So that's one thing. And then I'd also say, I basically just had to tell myself that like I had like the best following and just kind of hype myself up and be like, I have 5,000 followers, but they're so loyal. 
And so I, I felt like my influence was super strong enough to where brands should want to work with me. And I also kind of stuck to my guns where I was like, I'm not going to do this for free. And so I kind of like wanted to make it more of a business mindset rather than being like, oh, I want this for free and this for free just because like it's something for free. And so I was just kind of like, of course, it's you have to take free stuff in the beginning, some things, but I was also super specific of who I worked with. And I always worked with someone that aligned with my brand and not like something I would actually use because I, I thought if, if I wouldn't use it, why would I promote it? I want to create trust with my audience. And if my followers can't trust me, then I'm not going to have a high engaged audience. Like I'm not going to grow. So that was always a big thing for me. More than making money, it was first of all, building that community. And then once I had that community, then I was able to easier make money and it make things more authentic. So let's talk about a little bit of the strategies. So we got to meet last year because you um, joined my Pitch It Perfect program, which is a program that teaches people how to do exactly this, how to make money through brand partnerships, through content creation, through working with companies. So walk us through how you got into that. What was the process like for you? And then how fast did it work for you? You Learned the right way to pitch. You got the templates and you started to learn some of these strategies. Yeah. So um, once I dived in, I would say it was really reassuring. I think for me, the email templates was the best thing because for me, I was always nervous. I'm like, how am I doing this email? Is it too long? Is it too short? Um, am I providing enough value? Are they going to see how valuable I am from this email? And I feel like before Pitch It Perfect, I wasn't providing that. And I feel like I got a lot of brands who weren't responding. And it was kind of frustrating and a little bit like it deterred me from wanting to do more sometimes. So then once I thought did Pitch It Perfect and I realized, okay, what are my strengths? And like, how am I going to showcase the best parts of me in this email and make it engaging enough for them to want to respond? And so I kind of used those templates and kind of made my own version to make it more me. And then Every time I feel like I got a response, I mean, there was maybe a couple of times where it didn't work, but even back when I had, I was pregnant, I had like 12,000 followers and I was like, I really want a stroller. And like, that was like my one thing. I was like, I want to get a stroller for free and all these things. And so I pitched a brand and like, it took some work. Like it took some work. It took like three emails and they finally were like, okay, like we may want to work together. And I had to kind of keep like, keep going at it. And I got that deal and I was so happy because I was like, wow, like this really works. And like, um, that, and then another one where I turned, um, a deal that was unpaid into a paid collaboration, kind of using the same framework from pitch it perfect and like, um, learning how to turn it to make it more advantageous for you. And so I was kind of trying to like flip it. Like, I feel like, Hey, like we don't, you don't have a hundred thousand on Instagram. Some, there was a brand that did that to me. And I was like, well, I may not have a hundred thousand on Instagram, but I'm getting enough engagement where it's beneficial for you. And I also, then I'd play into like, I also have a TikTok platform and I have this many followers if that's something of interest. And so kind of flipping certain things. So if they do kind of say no to kind of like figure out a way to get them to say yes. And I feel like Pitch It Perfect was super helpful. And more than anything, I would say it really helped me with um, confidence. And I say that because it was really reassuring being in the group with other women who are going through the same things. And like, also finding my worth. Like I saw another girl who had the same amount of followers in me, but she was charging like twice the amount and getting these big deals. And I was like, why am I not doing that? I'm like, I need to charge more. And so I think it really helped me like learn my value and like what I can charge. And it really just helped me like increase profits, like very steady. But what you were saying before, I got my first deal, like seriously, I don't know, like a week after doing Pitch It Perfect. And like, I made my money back instantly, basically. And I would love for those that are watching this that don't know what it is, in your own words, what is Pitch It Perfect and how has it helped you make money? And who are yeah, these so, other people? Like, I saw this person that had less followers. Like, who are these other people in the program that also help you make money? Yeah. So there's, like, so many amazing women in the program who have ranges from, like, a smaller following. Like, I would say, like, even 1,000 to, like, 50 to 100. And there's other women who are basically looking to do the same thing you are, which is get brand deals and get paid for your work even if um, you're just wanting to create content, getting paid for that content. Um, and so, yeah, basically like the group um, is amazing. There's different women who are going through the same things as you are, which I love. It's like, hey, what should I charge this brand? If this brand's asking for this, is this normal? And there's all these questions that you have that I feel like you're always in the dark with. And it's super nice to be in Pitch It Perfect for that reason. But overall, Pitch It Perfect is a way to um, land brand deals and get paid for your work and not just be having to create content for free. And so getting paid for what you deserve is what it is. And it's super nice because it works. Awesome. Found the program. You decided to invest in it. 
we know that you got your money back really quickly. How else has it helped you? Because you even said last year you made about $17,000. And how much were you making before you joined the Peach It Perfect? Oh, I don't know. I'm not a lot. Like, I, I want to say, like, I maybe made, like, 5,000, maybe three. Like, I don't even know if I even, I can't even tell you. Like, it was nothing, nothing notable. That's for sure. So before Pitch It Perfect, there was not much going on. And then I was, I was hesitant to invest. I'm like, oh, I don't want to like spend money on that. Like, is it going to work? Like you always have these doubts and stuff. And then I was listening to other testimonials and I was like, why would I not try it? Like, I'm all about investing in myself. And like, if I think I'm worth it, you invest. So if you're not going to go all in, then you won't invest. But if you want to go all in and make money and become like an influencer, a blogger, someone to like a way to make money, this is how do you do it? So you weren't really making a lot of money. And then you were like, okay, I'm going to invest in this program, check it out, like learn these new strategies, use these templates, meet these other women. And then you made $17,000 last year. And then you, you're making almost, yeah. almost hit six figures this year. So like, how were you able yeah. to grow to make that much money that fast? using Pitch It Perfect? It always goes back to like knowing my worth. And so for me, I'm like, now I know like how much I can charge. Now I know how much I should be charging for video rights. Like I should be charging this amount and not giving away for free. So certain things like that, that I've learned in the group has really helped me make the money. So getting these high paying brand deals that are like five figure deals. And so getting those deals a lot of times too, is knowing my worth and knowing how much I can charge and Pitch It Perfect has helped me with that. Realizing, yes, I can charge X amount and like seeing um, people or brands like sneak in the rights and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, um, you're going to pay me for that. So <laughs> figuring that out. And what I've realized too, working with brands is that brands will pay and they act like, I think we think in our minds that they won't pay, but brands will pay you money. Like they, they have that budget and like, they just want to see like what they can get out of you is what I've realized. So even when I pitch too, I realized, okay, I can probably charge more and they'll probably land on what I want. And so that's kind of what I do. And like, I think too, if you charge more, they like, they're like, wow, they have value. Whereas if you undercharge too, then they think of you as someone not as legit, if that makes sense. A lot of times people, it's not that they don't know how much to charge, but they're afraid that they don't know how much to charge. And they're afraid that like, if I throw this number out, it's going to scare the brand. They're going to go away and I'm going to miss the deal. And so they end up grossly undercharging or they end up not charging at all. And then they do a bunch of pay, like free work basically. Um, and they don't have the right strategy in place to understand like when is the right time to actually do free work when it's time to like build the relationship and get that going. How did you know how much to charge for brand deals when you had a lower following? And I think that you mentioned before, a lot of that you learned just being inside the Pitch It Perfect community and having yep. the other group share what they're charging. Yep follow one number. And then we talk about it in the group too, but how were you able to kind of navigate that once you got in the program? Yeah. So I think I would just ask when I was in the Facebook group, I'd say, Hey, how much like do you typically charge for like this amount of followers, this engagement rate, like this many story views for a post or like an Instagram, a sponsored story. And now I'd get other people's views, like what they're charging or what they think they would charge. And so that would kind of give me like a base range of what I would think. I'd also take into account like how many hours is this going to take for me to get done? Is it going to take um, like an hour? Is it going to be like three hours? Am I going to shoot it myself? I'm going to get help taking into account that because not only is it like you're charging for the content, but you're charging for the amount of hours you put in. And I don't think I realized that in the beginning, I would kind of be like, Oh, it's fine. Like I can give them the rights. Like I'm just going to, I'm happy that I'm giving them money to begin with. But what you realize that brands will pay you is what I've realized. Like I, no matter what, if a brand gives me a rate, I, even if it's what I want, I will still come back and be like, Oh, I would love to just like put it here. And they will like 95% of the time they will. So I think if you realize your worth, it really shows if you have your confidence when you're pitching these brands and they will come back and they will give you the rate you want. And so I think having a low following, you still have to realize that you're providing these brands content that they need in order to have a good Instagram to get, um, to show their audience that, Hey, we're working with these like girls and like, they love this product. Like that's also beneficial for them. Even just getting those photos or those videos. That's so good. And I know we have an entire module dedicated to negotiation inside Pitch It Perfect, where we talk a lot about, you know, 
various circumstances that could happen, gifted offer, paid offer, you want more, and how do you kind of negotiate to meet people in the middle and to make it a mutual beneficial win-win for everyone that, you know, you're getting paid, you're growing exposure, you're growing impact, the brand's growing awareness, the brand's selling their products, you know, that's really, you know, their goal at the end of the day, they want to increase revenue and increase brand recognition. And that's why they work with influencers and content creators in the first place to help them do that. Um, So I love that question. Great question, Kelsey. Um, We have another question here from um, Rosh in core. Um, How how do brands contact you and how do you know whom to reach out if you are doing it? So Pitch It Perfect, we talk a lot about like, if a brand contacts you, that's just like a cherry on top win. It's really about you going out and contacting the brands. And so do you want to share a little bit about, and I think a lot of people have this misconception that they think like, well, I'll be ready to work with brands once a brand contacts me or once they find me, then I'll be ready to work with brands. And it's like, no, you're ready to work with brands the day that you realize that it's your job to go and contact them. And of course you have to learn the right way to do that. So if you could share a little bit about your experience with that. Yeah. So I think that was one of another hard thing for me actually was figuring out how do I get in contact with these people? Like it was always so confusing to me. I'm like, how do people get like brands, email addresses? And what I've realized too, it's as simple as, um, DMing them on Instagram, just being like, Hey, I love this product and I use it all the time. I would love to work together. Is there someone I can reach out to an email address I can reach out to, to, to talk about it? Stuff like that. So simple. And like 95% of the time they give it to you. There's every one-off chance where they're like, oh, we're not doing collaborations, whatever. Not a big deal. So you just DM them on Instagram. I used to sometimes find people on LinkedIn, but I found Instagram was my biggest tool, which I didn't even realize. Um, Additionally, if you have other friends who are doing influencer stuff, working with brands, say, hey, um, I would love to work with this contact that you worked with. Like, can we trade contacts? Or if you have zero contacts at the moment, just be like, hey, are you willing to trade contacts? Like, in exchange, I can help you. Uh, do photos or do this or do that. You kind of just have to really be proactive. And I always thought it was so hard. I'm like, how do they get this contact? How do they do this? And it's literally so simple. It's just DMing them on Instagram is what I've realized. That's where I've gotten all of mine. I worked with Nuna, the stroller company I was talking about earlier. I wanted a stroller. I just DM them on Instagram, got the email address. It took some time, but it worked. So I think it's as simple as doing that. Awesome. Great response. And I'm sure Macy would be more than happy if you guys want to slide into her DMs and she can share um, how to do that. She is one of our incredible referral partners and she can walk you through just more of her own experience, how she's been able to do it, how you can do it too, um, and really support you in any of that. So I would recommend you guys just popping into Macy's DM at the end of this conversation and she'd be happy to, to send you over some information. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have because like I said, I had them all in the beginning and I was like, does it really work? Like all these different things and like, yeah. So just feel free to DM me. I'd be more than happy to talk to any of you and share about my experience even further. Awesome. Thank you, Macy. Okay, great question from Madeline Creative. She says, do you feel like you needed brand deals that you didn't make money from at first? You're basically saying like, did you feel like that you needed to do free brand deals first in order to showcase your worth. I'll start with this. And Macy, I would love your perspective. I always say like, I think it depends. I think it depends on the brand. I think it depends on their goals. That's why we have in module one of Pitch It Perfect. It is basically like setting the foundation of like, how do you properly research a brand? So you know what it is that they're looking for. What kind of questions are you asking a brand when you're pitching them? So you know kind of like how to curate your pitch and you know how to set it up. Because, Madeline, you are correct. There are going to be some brands out there. They're going to want to make sure that you can actually convert for them. So they're not going to be you know, wanting to pay you hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of dollars if you don't convert. So it's your job as the content creator to show them like, yes, I can actually help you convert revenue I can sell for you, or I can help you build brand around brand awareness and brand recognition. So this is when I think that a lot of good affiliate partnerships can happen. If a brand is offering you commission, like that in turn, you are getting paid. They're just really wanting to see like, how well do you do this? And I think that if it's a brand that you really love, I think absolutely being like, Hey, let me show you what I can do. Let me like post some stuff, really make this a win for you. And I think that that also sets you up Madeline to actually negotiate for more pay after you have showed them how amazing you are at creating content and how much you help them sell or get the word out. Now you've got a lot of balls in your court to be able to go like, okay, so you've seen what I can do for free. 
now let's pony up and let's make this a legitimate thing. And it could also probably lead to a longer term partnership as well. I totally agree with that. Um, I think like when you're first starting, you for sure have to do some stuff for free. Like I know I did my first couple deals for free. Like I think one of them was like, I got a free pair of boots just to send them photos. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I think you kind of have to start doing stuff to also show brands. Like I've worked with people before because if you haven't worked with anyone, they're gonna be like, well, like why would we pay you if you have no experience working with brands? So I think you do have to have some things under your belt to showcase to other brands. And I think it, it also creates credibility for you. Um, and then like Julie said, like after you do that, you can be like, Hey, let me show you what I can really do. And I guess I have an example for this. I worked with Outlet and I think they didn't want to pay me at first because I didn't have a hundred K on Instagram. And then, so I moved into TikTok where at, at the time I had like 200,000. And so I said, Hey, like I'll do this on TikTok for you. Charged them a rate. They took it. Obviously I like wanted more eventually. I don't think I charged for rights at that time. Um, so it's like, I'm just happy to get this money. And then, um, I did the video for them and it went like mega viral and it hit like 11 million views on TikTok. And so after that, we've had the best relationships. Like, wow, like they know that like, I will convert every time I post for them. I'm going to create content that works super well for my audience and for, um, other people who like this kind of content. So I think, um, it's really great too. If you just get that contact and like, for me, like Outlet, like that's a big brand for me. Like I love Outlet. And so I, I was like a huge brand. So I'm happy to do that at this rate. And then like, after that, I was like, Hey, like they want to set up more deals at that same rate. And I was like, Oh, actually, like I would love to push. And so that then I had the, the room to negotiate because I showed like what my worth was and how I convert for them. So like Julie said, I would say it's great to do stuff for maybe a little bit lower for the first time to then create that relationship. Because that, for example, is one brand that I have a relationship that have ongoing deals now, which is a huge part of my income during the year. And that's why, you know, it's so important. And, you know, it's in module four of Pitch It Perfect that we talk about, like, when is that moment to then switch gears and to, like, start asking to get paid? And then, like, how do you do that? And how do you bump it up? And it really does start with the confidence and then having the actual expertise and the actual cred- credibility, the stats and the data to back that up and how you get that is by getting started and creating really, really valuable content. And then, you know, you got to learn the right way to do that moving forward. So it sustains you. Yeah. And I was going to say too, that like what I also would do with future pitches, because I had such a successful one at Outlet, I'd say, Hey, um, do my whole spiel. And I'd be like, and here are some recent partnerships that I've had just for your reference. And I would attach the videos that had like 10 million, another video that I had that had like 400,000 for a brand just so that they're like, oh, wow, like she does create content that converts. So I think you can use that in future pitches when you do have a good, um, yeah, when something good does happen. This one from Eating with Kirby is great. She said, how do you strategically ask the brand for their budget range versus you giving them your rate card first? So this is a big thing that we talk about inside the program. There's a whole entire lesson dedicated to it. Um, So I can't walk you through the whole strategy on this Instagram live, but I can give you the first step. And so to me, yes, there is a strategy to it. And learning that strategy is the key, but the first step to that strategy is it's more, instead of how do you strategically ask, it's how do you confidently ask? And so the confidence is the first step there. And it's really about creating valuable content, getting it out there and really knowing how, and it's not that you have have to have a ton of experience, but you have to be able to have the confidence to go in, to know your worth. The first step is like, I have to know what my value is. What is it that I bring to the table? What am I bringing to the table? How can I help them either convert in sales or, you know, pump out their brand awareness, make their brand recognition greater. And then that's going to allow me to ask for what I want with more confidence. So confidence is the first step with any of that. I could give you all the strategy in the world. If you don't have the confidence to ask for what you want, the strategy is not going to work. So the confidence is the first step in there. And it's just, it's, it's asking for that. And instead of feeling fearful or afraid that like this opportunity is going to go away. So you just give them a rate card, which I I'll give you another little tip. I always like strongly oppose, like never, ever, 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 ever give your rate because what you're doing is you're setting yourself up to lose any negotiation power that you would have had because you showed all your cards. You said, I'm willing to do X, Y, and Z for this. You don't know. Maybe the brand was like, wow, we were going to pay her like four times that, but if she's willing to do it all for that, well, then we'll just go with that. So it's really about the collaborative effort of like, 
confidently knowing this is my value. This is the time, money, energy, and resources that Macy mentioned earlier. Time's a huge factor there. This is what it's going to take for me to do this. And then now I have the strategy, which we teach inside the program, the step-by-step to learn the method to go through. And so this is how I can ask the brand for their range. And Macy, I would love to know if you have any like stories or any feedback on that too. Yeah, no, I would do the same thing because like I said, the worst thing ever is to give a, them a price and then know that you could have got more. I think it kind of eats you, eats away inside. Um, and I think it's happened to me a couple of times in the past. Um, so I, yeah, like I, like you were saying, I think I never usually like to give a range. I, I mean, if I do, I'll give a range. I'll never give a rate, a set rate, because a lot of times too, what you'll notice is that brands will sneak in rights into your contract. They'll sneak in other things. I had a brand one time sneak in, um, like the, my video had to hit a minimum hundred thousand views in the first two days. And I was like, absolutely not. Um, so certain things that you don't realize that, so that's another thing I'll say, be very careful with these contracts that brands send you because they will try to sneak things in that you don't realize. Um, and so a lot of things too, with the rates is that you, um, you don't want to give a rate, I would say, cause like, like Joe was saying, they usually have a budget to pay you more. And so, um, I would ask for their range. And then if it's below what you were thinking, I would say, Oh, like I, I was hoping to get this. I wouldn't say it like that, but like with confidence say, Oh, my minimum is this for like X, Y, and Z. Um, different things that you can use, but obviously if you word it right, they will pay you that range or what I usually do is I go above it and say like, this is my minimum and then I'll get the rate I want. And so you kind of have to do that. So they know like, Hey, this is her value. This is what she's charging other brands so that we can pay her this. That makes sense. The practice is going in and doing it. And, you know, and that's the big thing that, you know, what's so amazing about the community of Pitch It Perfect is that Pitch It Perfect has been around since 2016. My background and, and why I teach this, I, I was a publicist for over 15 years. I have a really strong PR and marketing background. I have been pitching since 2007 before social media even really existed, minus I think Facebook and maybe Twitter was around at the time. Um, but what we teach, it doesn't matter if there's new platforms that come and go. It's it's the foundation that you need to confidently get what you want and ask for what you want. And we have this incredible community and we have years and we have over 5,000 students that have now gone through this program that, you know, are able to be there to support you, to, to share their examples, their, how they've been able to make it work. Of course, my years of experience is in there. It's my entire pitch profit methodology that I have mastered over the last like 15 years, which really kind of dates me. But what I am saying is that it really does work. And if it didn't, there wouldn't have been 5,000 plus students that have gone through it. It wouldn't still be here after almost six years. And so I would say that the key to this is getting started, whether you learn it from me or you learn it from people like Macy, you just have to learn the right way to do this. And you have to get started today because there's, there's so much money and opportunity that you're missing out on today because you keep telling yourself that you're not ready. You don't have enough followers. You you've tried it before and it doesn't work. Whatever it is that you're telling yourself, the reason why it's not working for you today is because you haven't learned the right way to do it. And that's okay. There's no shame in that. I mean, if you don't know the right way to swim, you're probably not going to be able to swim without drowning. If you don't know the right way to drive a car, you're probably not going to be able to drive it without getting in a car accident. So like we all have to learn the right way to do something in order to be successful at it. And so with that said, Macy, I would love for you to, to share a little bit more. And I know that you offered to answer any questions that people have. So that's amazing. Definitely DM Macy and she can share some things with you, but anything else that you just want to share about once you learn the right way to do this, how did it change your life? How did it change the way that, you know, you work? How did it change you know, you as a mom, like how did it really give you the freedom and everything that you've been wanting in life? Yeah. So that's actually like the best question because it has given me so much more freedom. Like this year I'm building a house. It wouldn't be possible without making the money I have through Pitch It Perfect and pitching brands. Um, also I'm able to now like quit my full-time job. I'm still in a full-time job. So I'm getting the house and I have to have the loan, but, um, <laughs> but I'm able to easily quit my full-time job. So it's giving me financial freedom, freedom to come spend more time with my family. So overall, it's been like a huge blessing because I know how to pitch brands. I know my worth. I know how to get what I want. I know how to get paid for my work. And so I'd say that's the biggest thing is getting paid for your work. And those misconceptions of being I have enough followers, brands need photos. They need content. They need those different things. They're going to pay a photographer if they don't pay you. So you need to know your worth and realize that even if you had to followers, you can still get paid for beautiful pictures and different things and just build your portfolio that way. So it's a great program. So feel free to DM me if you have any questions. 
Awesome. Well, thank you, Macy, so much for being here today and just sharing your experience, offering a ton of tips and tricks and feedback. And for those that had questions, thank you so much for submitting those. A lot of really great questions in there and a lot of which we cover today and we cover in more detail inside the program. So like Macy said, if you want to really kind of take this to the next level, if you want to stop beating your head against the wall, trying to like figure it out by yourself. If you want to save yourself some, some headaches and some years and really start making money really quickly and easily, just message Macy and she will let you know um, how to do that and answer any questions that you have. So thanks everybody for being here. We appreciate it.